Another edition of the Naked. I don't know. I kind of have to suck this gut in a little bit. I don't know because uh, I don't know. You just do. I mean, from this side, does it look like I'm sucking in my gut or not? I would say that this gut here, like there's muscle underneath here. There's muscle in there. I can feel it. And this, is this cellulite? Would you call this here? Is this cellulite or not? Would you call that cellulite? Is that cellulite or is this just like, you know, because if I stand up, it's just like extra skin. I don't know. And then I got this bulge. Is this a hernia? Because the muscle is solid right here. And it kind of bulges and then it goes in here on the side. Is that like the beginnings of a pro... I don't think it looks like a six pack to me or an eight pack. But, you know, is that like the natural thing? It comes down like that? Is it supposed to come out? Or is it supposed to go like lean? I don't know, because it's this part here. Like, I need major massage work. Because this muscle here, uh, it's it's been like this my whole life, I would say. Except maybe when I was a teenager. But as an adult, it just feels like because I did take various kinds of massages over the years. And to me, as a massage person who's trained in various kinds of massages, Shiatsu and Lomi Lomi, for example, this tummy down here feels like the muscles are tense. They're in a permanent state of being tense. As a masseur, I know when muscles are tense. And these muscles right here underneath my belly button have been tense my whole life. And up here, I don't know. My belly gets tired and it wants to distend. And then, I don't know, then I look like I got man boobs or something. Because there's other times when my body feels differently and it, it, I don't know, it looks way more athletic. Because bodies like to show you that they can appear at times to be athletic and other times to be not athletic. Because now, from this distance, does I look like I'm fat at all? Huh? Do I look like I'm fat now when I'm sitting up straight in a chair? Would you say I'm fat? Would you say that little bit here? looks like I'm obese or something? Do I look obese to you? Because that's the only complaint I got is like this little bit of loose that, you know, might just be skin for, you know, you need a little bit extra skin for I had a huge, huge meal. I did. I had a huge meal and I drank so much beer that now I got this big Thunder Bay beer gut. Because I'm in Thunder Bay and in Thunder Bay people get huge beer guts. Because, and then their ass gets all, well, Thunder Bay people, they either got two kinds of asses. You know, there's two kinds of people. There's people that have got no ass whatsoever, and a huge beer gut. And then there's people that are the other way. They're all ass. Well, they're all ass. And then they got a beer gut on top. And then they got the big ass, and the big beer gut, and then you know they're heading to the brewer's retail. Because it's time to get another 2 4 of beer. Now, in Ontario, Canada, when you buy beer, preferably you buy a case of beer. Preferably. Because that's the natural thing for somebody in Thunder Bay to buy beer in cases. And a case of beer in different provinces of Canada is a different local folklore. Local folklore. Now, look at with the ball cap. Do I look fat? Really? Do I look fat? Do I look? Do I look like I got a big ass? I don't know. Does my ass look good or what? Huh? But my gut, my beer gut, or if I suck it in and I do athletic poses, do I look like I'm athletic now? Because I'm athletically posing then, and I'm doing the crunch. Now with the crunch, I don't have an eight pack, but I don't want to tell you that I'm obese or anything. I'm not. I'm not fat. I'm really not. And it's mostly posture that changes it from having a proper chest to having man boobs. You know, that's the way it works. Anyways, now, 
It's just this little bit, you know, because it's this. But, you know, I don't know. I'd have to, I don't know. I went for a month last year without eating. Involuntarily, I was demonic attacked. But I went for a whole month on bread. No, no bread. Lemon water. Water with a one squirt of real lemon lemon juice for a month. I might have had some coffee. Liquids only. Because of demonic attack, I was laid up. That was August of 20, is it 2022 this year? 2021 then. I don't know. It's just that I went a whole month without eating. And I didn't wither away to, you know, skin and bones. No, I didn't. And to me, it's like, well, you know, I don't know, because I went for a month. And did I lose? No, I didn't change in my physical form at all. I didn't gain weight and I didn't lose weight. I didn't eat for a month. Now, you're going to say, but it's impossible. It's not. There is something hinky in our hinky, H-I-N-K-Y. It's our term for... French Stewart from Third Rock from the Sun. What does Hinky mean? French? It means something from Supernatural, that TV show Supernatural. If something is Hinky, if something is Hinky, something is Hinky here. You're not telling the truth. Something is, or it's more like, it's something is Hinky. Something feels off. Is there like a werewolf over there? Is it a Sasquatch? Maybe it's a neighbor's dog. It's just that I heard a startle. It's a startle reflex. It's primitive. It's from primitive when we used to be animals. It's like we can hear a pin drop at certain times. And you hear a pin drop. He's like, well, that's what happens. Because if you had a lifetime when you were a mouse, that noise was the noise of a bobcat about to pounce. And maybe you had 20, 10, I don't know, how many lifetimes did you have as a mouse? Because your previous lifetimes as a mouse, you died at the hands of a bobcat. So now you're exceptionally attuned to listen to anything that sounds like a bobcat moving around. And if you hear a twig snap, it's like, oh my God, what are you going to do? It's fight or flight instantly for the mouse. Instantaneously fight or flight, but you're not a mouse. So, how are you going to react to this? Well, you're going to know that you had previous lifetimes where you were an animal and you got eaten. That was the end of that animal lifetime. And it was you, your isby. What's an isby? It's that part of you that moves from lifetime to lifetime. It's your living bit. Your living life thing. Is it soul? No. I know it's confusing, but in my, because I have to go through everybody else's definition of words, and they're not the same. They use the same word and the same context, and it's either incorrect and one, it's just wrong. Because a lot of people just flip around, use all the vocabulary, but they're not defining the vocabulary, and many times these commonly... Anyways... That's what the problem is. Okay, so what else do we want to talk about? Okay, so clearly I'm not fat and I'm not skin and bones. So if anybody's wondering, you know, how's my health? I'm going to look at you and say, do I look unhealthy? Just so you know, do I look unhealthy? You know, do I look unhealthy or not? Really, do I look unhealthy right now? Right now I'm feeling a lot of tension across my back because this is actually where I should be in posture wise and I've had a lifelong battle with posture because getting to get my neck back and aligned has been like a constant problem in my whole lifetime me constantly noticing that my posture has gone into a slump slumping over 
slumping over and me constantly trying to arrange to get my because just the way it is it's just that be aware because a lot of us have got the same problem we're prone to bad posture and I don't even know why but it was like the time I was I don't know the first time I bought a, a, Okay, I don't know. Someone's blocking me. Someone's trying to sh show off that I'm under a remote neural monitoring still because they want to have a pattern of showing you that, you know, they're Ted Kaczynski. Ted Kaczynski is the real human name of the Unabomber who was a, a mainstream news terrorist. I don't know. I don't know, Ted Kaczynski, 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, somewhere along there. Anyways, he was on the news, mainstream news, and he would send bombs to people in, you know, like shoeboxes, and shoebox put a bomb in it and then wrap it all up and send it to somebody, a bomb, and it would blow up. And, you know, they would somehow get information that the guy was calling himself the Unabomber, And a long time later, you know, whatever it was, a long time later, after the story had long died, they brought it back and they said, we caught the Unabomber and he was a professor of university or college and his name was Ted Kaczynski. So we finally found out the name that mainstream news gave for Ted Kaczynski. Now, if I don't, I don't know these official poses. I can't do them because I don't work out or, you know, I want a gym or anything. Well, I don't know. I did when I was younger. I don't know. I, because I didn't, I didn't know. Anyway, so this whole thing about the posture and the shoulders is because the first time I went and got a suit, was it for grade 12 graduation? I guess so. Grade 12, 17 years old. When I was 17 years old, they said, the tailor said, I've got shoulder roll, which is something the tailors notice. And it means that you've got like a roll in your, it's lordosis in biology. It's lordosis. I can't remember what the other one is, but there's two moves that rats make in their mating behavior. I don't know. Anyways, it's, uh, um, it's just that, you know, it's like this. And then the suit's got to be adjusted. And the feeling always for me, and I don't know if it's true because it could be body dysmorphia. It's like when you're not able to see your body from the right angles and you can't figure out if you're like problem or not. But a lot of times I felt like somehow my neck is not, it's like this neck, this area up here, for me, it's permanently, like along the back, especially here, it's permanently just like my tummy down underneath here. It feels permanently like it won't relax. It's permanently in a state of crunch. And it's not a crunch for your tummy being better. No, it's just because it is. I don't know, like somebody who's a bodybuilder needs to tell me. Does that look like that bulge should be right according to a pose? If I do all of these poses, does it look like, is that a Tommy John stomach or not? Or is this like wrong? I need to know. And if you tell me to do exercises, I'm going to tell you, it's, I don't know. It's posture. Because the whole posture of my body is being fucked with by remote neural monitoring. Which does this, synthetic moving of your hand by Dr. Ho, by remote control. So, posture problems for me that it could never seem to be resolved, even when it went for Lomi Lomi. Well, I never understood it, but it's always felt like there's something wrong in my neck and shoulders. Like somehow it's in, I never knew why. It was just like, well, we just knew that... We were told in those days, you know, your genetics is your genetics. And if your genetic family is that they're prone to being like man boobs and all honked over, then, you know, they're like man boobs and all honked over. But there you go. Like, that's 
I don't know. Do I look like I got bad boobs or not? I don't know. Is like that rolling over too much? Just because it's like I stand up. And it's just like I don't know. Like when I, if I suck in my gut, these stomach muscles suck in. But these ones are not responding. These ones respond. And these muscles, when I want them to suck in tighter, they won't. And it's like there's something going on here. So in the olden days, we'd say it's something genetic. Maybe go see a chiropractor. In the end, they're going to say, you're going to just have to live with it. And people do. And that's why the tailor knows about shoulder rolls when they're making adjustments to mm, suit jackets. Well, it's just that now, after I've been attacked by high technology for so long, it's just come out. The reason my posture is bad is because I've been a targeted person my whole life. And I've said in all my targeted individual remote neural monitoring electronic harassment videos lately that you are also on it because I remember talking to my cousin, probably Jim Wally in Thunder Bay. I don't know when he was, I don't know when he was seven and I was nine, maybe. I don't know. And what we're talking about is, you know, somebody coined a term for this um, phenomenon, which was called, uh, well, we didn't know. We called it like, it's like a song playing in your head. It's like, mom, I got the song playing in my head. I know, but I don't want it to play anymore. And how do you turn off the song in your head? And you'll be saying, well, I do know. And then it comes across, well, everybody sooner or later is going to tell you, yeah, I've had that, where there's a song, unwanted song, playing radio quality in my head. And it's like, well, the human mind has got a mind of its own, and sometimes it drives you nuts because something in your mind is playing that song unwanted. Well, there's things that are like, your mind is not your mind, is it? If you really come down to it, when you've got like that thing and it's like, go away and it won't, then that's not your mind. Because it's not responding to your commands. So what is it? Well, we never knew in those days because they kept telling us that, you know, demonic possession was only for the movies. You know, The Exorcist with Linda Blair or Damien Thorne with The Omen or Rose the Hat in the sequel to The Shining. That movie is called Dr. Sleep. Because these people are like, you know, and in the movies it was innate for evil people to have superpowers. But what we learned from David R. Hawkins of Consciousness Research is that uh, the spiritual superpowers come to people who are higher on the scale of human consciousness. Maybe, I don't know, you can look it up. And they're not under conscious control of the person who is hosting the spiritual superpower. Because it's not. That's what David Hawkins had it happen to him. He witnessed it, and, you know, it wasn't him doing what happened with these energies that he witnessed. So the spiritual superpowers were not run by the teacher, David R. Hawkins. They're not under his conscious control, someone else's. And these ones were um, angelic energies to go and help somebody who'd just been in car accidents. Anyways, the attacks on me are remote neural monitoring and they're considered high tech. And again, the test for somebody, who, if they're using remote neural monitoring and you never knew and they've been telling you all along that they're, you know, a dark angel, they're, a, you know, an art demon or a lord of karma or a lord of cruelty like Brent Beeson or something, then what you do is you say to whoever the voice is that's talking to you, you're going to say, okay, I can do that. And then you put them to the test. Whoever's talking to you, voice to skull technology, you say, okay, now you demon, you move that Kleenex. And the people who attack me cannot move anything physical other than this physical body, which is a living thing, and, you know, the Kleenex ain't. So, you know, electronic attack on humans because by remote control, you know, they've got all that sensory stuff. They show this in the movies, you know, like they've got ability to look through walls. 
This technology was announced in like the 1980s, 1990s. Technology like a radar, microwave radar, that can look right through brick walls to see the person beyond. Because they needed it for the military, for you know, clearing houses. They need to go and see who's in there and where are they. And they need something that gives them an image through the brick wall. So they can look using this military technology. What do you think they do when they're telling you about doing drone strikes in Yemen or Afghanistan? They've got tracking technology, and the ones they show you are like phony baloney because it's very low quality video. And no one is going to believe the U.S. military has got shitty video. Worse than what you get on your smartphone. No, it's because they don't want to release to their enemies the quality of the full signal. They just want to let you know that they do track human beings and they let you know they kill them with drone strikes. So anyways, I don't know what else to tell you. You know, it's because we're talking about, you know, uh, well, why is it then I can't suck in this part? And the answer that I'm giving you is because I've been under this technology that does herky-jerky me by remote control. Um, that I've been attacked by those earbug things from way back when I was like seven or nine years old, so my entire life. So this technology have, was in place. I don't know. I was born in 1965. So 1965, this uh, attack humans with this kind of technology was already in existence in those days. So everybody else. You were born into a world with already a total surveillance society where they can kill you using this remote neural technology. Yes, many times, times in my life, many times, many different ways. And then the question is, well, is this just a demonstration? Well, after six years of me being tortured, it is no demonstration. The demonstration is that I am alive after six years of them. Torturing and it's more than six years because it goes back to like I said I was like seven or nine years old when you first noticed that these things are playing in your head These radio songs beamed into you and then they would make fun of people like that would say Because they would say well a tin hat people and what were the tin hat doing? They were trying to use a metal to try and block a radio frequency that was beamed into their head And it, you all experienced that earbug thing. That's what they called it earbug When the song is playing in your head so this remote neural technology monitoring is also set up on you. And why are you not attacked? I can't even know because I didn't know. And you're not given words all those years. Why am I getting words now when I didn't get words six years ago? When six years ago I wanted to talk about what's going on because it was all blocked. So the ability to block you directly from your internal affairs departments, which are something in place there by G.O.D. And G.O.D. wants to remind you that it's not necessarily G.O.D. of the Bible, but it could be G.O.D. of somebody who's got God powers like what you get when you're playing a video game and you want to get cheat codes. And one of them is God. A cheat code of God lets you, you know, break all the rules of the game. Anyways, torturing me because it's making it hard to breathe because they're doing something right now with making it hard for me to breathe. Anyways, you know, do I look fat? Because Jerry, Sh Gary Shandley, I mean, Jerry Shand and this is just horrid. He's going to throw my phone out of my hand. Because when you find out who these terrorists are, you're going to know that they are terrorists and they love because you can see for six fucking years, that's all they've done. Anyways, am I fat? Gary Shandling from the Gary Shandling show is always saying, is my ass fat or am I fat? And it does look fat. But is it because of remote neural monitoring doing something here? I don't know. Anyways, because there's other people that I know that have gone even for surgery because of, you know, problems with hernia. And the hernia wasn't a hernia, naturally, for some of you, because... You're under remote neural monitoring the same as me, and I've been tortured for six years. I don't know if you've been tortured by this shit or not. But, you know, you're not complaining about it to me. But you've got earbuds, so you're in the system already. And if they decided to turn it on to a full blast, then they would kill everybody. All eight billion humans on the turn of a switch. A kill switch on every human. Because every human is hooked up to this, and they showed you in the movie The Kingsman. There was a Kingsman too. 
Because everybody, like by remote control, will never be killed by remote control. Everybody on the planet, because that's the level of military technology on the planet. And someone's scratching my third eye, because they're doing that. Because that's what it is. So, I mean, where are we going with this? Well, am I fat? Gary Shandling is going to say, am I fat or not? You know, am I fat or not? I mean, really, is that fat or not? You tell me. Am I looking fat or is that like, you know, the pose of like, I don't know, is that right? I have to have a bodybuilder guy tell me, like, does it look right? Because the tummy does supposed to come out, but that much? Is it like a Roman soldier? A Roman centurion or not? I mean, really, I don't want to tell you, but I've never, ever had that eight-pack thing. I don't know. I don't know. That's as good as it gets. Be trying to strike the pulse. Does that look like I'm striking a decent pulse or not? I mean, I don't know. That's me working at it. <sighs> that was hard work. Those isokinetic exercises, yeah, that was a workout. Anyways, that's what I'm doing today. Now, everything else that's going on, you have to turn to the next video. Don't forget, subscribe and share. Don't forget to give me a like. And if you don't like me, then give me a thumbs down. I like down likes too. In other words, if you don't like it or you just found it bored, well, before you click out at 30 seconds, please give me a thumbs down. Because I want to know you were here. Because it changes the energies. Because the tarot card readers always say, get those likes up. So get those likes up. I mean, really, if I do a naked news one, I don't know, because I'm supposed to go to Treasure Island Media. Because they make, you know, porno. And I'm supposed to be in porn. Do I look like I'm fit for porn or not? Really? Do I look like I'm a porn star or not? I mean, do I? I don't know. Like, what do I got to do? Because I'm not going to be able to figure this out. Because. Does it look good or not? I don't know. Does it look good? Does it look good? Is my ass fat or not? Is it fat enough? I mean, look at my legs. I don't know. Is that a good leg or not? Would you like to bond on that if you're reptilian? Would you or not? I don't know. Is it a good leg? Does it look like a good solid leg or not? I don't know. That's the whole look. Does it look like I got scrawny legs or muscling legs or stupid legs or but I don't know. Otherwise, that's what you got. So, I'm taking proposals. I can't help you out because. <sighs> I don't know, if you want me to perform, and then, you know, I gotta have a facility. And, you know, other than me posing, you know, for Treasure Island Media, I gotta have it all. Anyways, I don't want to tell you, but I'm not gonna go bang on their door, because there could be somebody else who's, you know, better than that. So, you know, I can't help you out. What else do you want me to do with my physicality? Oh. I'm gonna film me eating? Well, I got nothing to eat right now. But... <sighs> Anyways, that's what you got. I don't know. And I do have my hair. I mean, it hasn't been clipped lately, but, you know, the hair is all there. And from the top, I'm not bald. And I'm not like hair wick. I mean, that's as bad as blah, blah, that's how it goes. You know, but it's not bald, just so you know. It's lots of hair, and you know, that's what you got. So, you know, anyways.